So I'm here with uh, Ricardo and uh, and Mark, Mr. Vestra. Yes. So yeah, so you just been, you just had a nice meeting, yeah? Yeah, I had a nice uh, meeting with uh, Laura, who used to work at Cost. She's now in Germany, and we talked about knowledge sharing, and uh, we came up with the uh, concept of the knowledge sharing continuum. So what's that? <laughs> well, <laughs> I wanted to explain. Uh, that there are many different ways of knowledge sharing, you know, and there's a couple of dimensions to it, right? I mean, uh, and this is actually uh, the, the first draft. Okay. <laughs> I know it doesn't look like much. Okay. But, you know, one of the important things in, um, in knowledge sharing is the time dimension, right? I said, okay, on the one hand you have a tweet, and on the other hand you have an Acropedia article, yeah. for example, right? Okay, that spans the continuum. And time is there a very important part of that continuum. A tweet is, you know, what is the lifetime of a tweet? You know, it, I know you're going to say, no, you know, but, years, but you know, it's minutes, it's, hours. Yeah, it's quite brief. It's, it's just brief, a step right? along the way. Exactly. Most so of it's the time. brief. So, and an Wikipedia article or a Wikipedia article should live for ten years, probably. Yeah. Right. So that's the kind of the time. Span. Yeah, because I, I, I do a lot of blogs, and blogs is somewhere in the middle. But it could exactly. be a very long ah, thing. See, that's blogs, where the blogs have a longer <laughs> thing. Tweets are just pieces of context on yeah. the way. But so that's that's why you see there's a continuum. So that's yeah. we said, okay, we have tweets, which yeah. is, let's say minute to hours. Then you have uh, a, a tool we so use as uh, yeah, tweets is here, right? Yeah. So it's time, minutes, or so. Yeah. Then we use Skype as a knowledge sharing tool, right? We have yeah. a Skype window on, we chat. This is a days, hours, yeah. along those lines. You have email is a tool, right? Yeah. It's it's months. It creeps forward. Uh, you have forum. You have uh, this thing I can't so like read anymore, forum, yeah. like a user forum. Yeah. Uh, what is this then? Ultra P. Yeah, it's, it's apparently it's Ultra P. <laughs> <laughs> no idea. It's what, what we that don't is. know about yet, but that's good. Exactly. Uh, then we have. Uh, oh yeah, no, I remember that. It's the training. We just yeah. said okay, maybe training should be on there also. It's but that's also you know uh, days scale. Yeah. And then there's blogs. Yeah. Blogs creep to the months, years scale. Yeah. Some of them have a very long lifetime, but they're yeah. meant, they should be immediate. Yeah. There right? should be an immediacy about it, but the knowledge there should be good for at least a couple of months to a year or something like that. Yeah, right? you should always write them with the assumption that they might be read in five, exactly. five years' yeah. time. Yeah, so they, should, they, have, they have context, yeah. they have structure. Okay. Yeah. And then you have things like Acropedia articles, which were basically written for eternity, right? Yeah. If you have a Wikipedia article about uh, mathematics, it should be readable in 100 years, right? Yeah. If you have an Acropedia article on a rope pump, it should be readable in 100 years. So you see this nice continuum in time, right? Yeah. From a tweet all the way up to minute scale to decade scale, right? So it's, and people, when they talk about knowledge sharing, they, they talk about it like it's one thing, right? But you see actually that you need tools that span the minute scale to the decade scale. Mm. One of the things that strikes me as interesting is often a lot of the organizations we deal with have, have produced um, booklets about things, but actually they are assumed to have a limited lifespan a lot of the time booklets, aren't <coughs> they? They've been designed for maybe to last for a year or two. It was in a way an Acropedia article, although it can be edited at any time, it is assumed that it, it may have a lot longer life yeah. than an yeah. information booklet. Yeah. Well, one of the things that we found with Acropedia is also that one of the, it's an illusion that you're going to have hundreds of people editing small pieces of information. Yeah. Right? It's very difficult to get to because you know, if you have Wikipedia, you have 100 million users, you have 1,000 contributors. You know? Maybe yeah. not that scale, but for every 1,000 users, you have a single contributor. Yeah. Those are more or less the numbers. Yeah. So any wiki that I've known of is struggling with getting a big enough user base to actually edit small pieces of information. But if you look at what it's, how you can also use it, it's a republishing tool, right? Because there's fantastic knowledge available, great studies, right? But they're all locked in PDFs on the web somewhere. Yeah. It's of course great that they're already on the web, yeah. but still they're in PDFs and they're, in, they're locked. So to free up that information, republish it, on a wiki, so that it becomes available through maybe uh, an Android app. Maybe you can turn it into a PDF again. Maybe yeah. you can put it into an HTML. So then you have one source of information. It becomes a document management system from which you can create other kinds and meshes of this knowledge. Great. Great. Well, thanks for this. It's, uh, it's been good, hasn't it?
Great. Thanks. <laughs> Thanks, Mark. The second... So we're not finished yet, <laughs> are we? It's, there's another dimension. <laughs> yes, yes. Uh, yeah, we found two dimensions. There might be one. <laughs> but in, there's the person dimension, the personality dimension, yeah. right? If you have a tweet, there's the picture of the person right next to it, right? So the, the person versus the content is almost 50-50, let's say. If you look at uh, an Aquapedia article, there's actually no person there, right? Mm. So there's, there's a scale. But we, we kind of struggle with this one because actually almost all the tools that you see, so tweet, Skype, email, forum, training, blog, they all have a strong personality content, except from the Aquapedia or the Wiki style. Yeah, PDI. So that's an interesting observation, right? And that's also why it's often hard to get... Because even reports do, don't even academic reports. They have authors. Well, yeah. Actually, it's one of the main important things of an article, the author. So one of the main failings, I think, of wikis is that they don't have... Of course, in the history, you can see who did what, mm. but it's not in your face there, yeah. right? And that's going to be a... That's a, that's a problem. Mm. And that's why we're also considering things like... Can we do ACFO partner sites for knowledge, right? So you can have your branding, but still you have the functionality of a wiki. So we, we, yeah. we're trying to get these innovations around how you deal with knowledge. That would work really well in some of the organizations deal like, with like Sujol, who I know has been putting, and uh, Water Schools, they've, been, they've yeah. been keen to put stuff in, but they, they sort of want to wrap their knowledge in their own skin. Yeah, exactly. And it not so necessarily have to drive everything and else let's off. Let's make that happen. Great, great. Thanks, Mark. <laughs>